Hi, my name is Jin Ho King, and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer for ArcGIS Indoors and Esri. In this ArcGIS Indoors demonstration, we will be looking at creating preliminary pathways in the ArcGIS Indoors data model. A network in ArcGIS Indoors is an essential component of creating indoor mapping and routing applications. The network is a set of pathways among all the rooms and assets in your indoor spaces. It includes transitions between the floors and landmarks for navigation. The network is used to create routing services for end users. The ArcGIS Indoors tools come with Indoors Network toolsets. The toolsets contain tools to generate preliminary transportation network pathways that are cut according to obstructions, such as walls or columns on each facility's floor plan. The first step to creating the network for the organization's facility is to create a preliminary network. A preliminary network is made with pathways describing every possible way to travel across the entire indoor spaces. These pathways are stored in the preliminary network feature dataset in your indoors geodatabase. Before running the geoprocessing tool, Let's verify a few critical feature values that impact the network data. First, verify level, detail, and unit features have matching relative elevation values. The relative elevation values should have been defined when import floor plans to indoors geodatabase geoprocessing tool was used with the CAD configuration Excel spreadsheet. The height values defined for the floor level's relative elevation in the CAT configuration Excel spreadsheet are the Z height values for each feature. Second, verify use type field on both details and units layers have appropriate values that can be used to identify architectural form and spaces. Transition zones like elevator and staircase feature records are critical to connecting each floor. Third, a user must identify assets in details and units layers that restrict pathways. Here in the details layer, I defined architectural assets including columns, exterior walls, exterior glasses, partial height dividers, and interior walls, which will work as barriers and restrict pathways to go around those assets. In the units layer, I identified closets and mechanical rooms are restricted areas where I do not want to generate pathways. Now we are ready to run the Generate Indoor Pathways geoprocessing tool. In Input Level Features, I selected the Levels layer. In Input Details Features, I selected the Details layer. As for the Detail Expression, I need to identify values that will not generate pathways. I specified the columns, wall exterior, wall glass, partial height divider, and interior walls inside the where clause. The target pathway is the preliminary pathways feature inside the preliminary network feature data set. The lattice rotation refers to the number of degrees by which the input floor's primary travel direction is rotated clockwise from due west. If left blank, the tool will calculate a value based on the minimum bounding rectangle of each floor. The lattice density is a numeric value that is allowed between nodes in the generated lattice of pathways. The default value is 0.6, which is in the meter unit, and it's equivalent to approximately two feet. As for the restricted unit features, I selected the unit's feature layer. I identified the closet and mechanical room from the use type field to restrict from generating pathways. Now, let's run the tool. After processing is complete, the preliminary pathways feature layer is added to the map. As you can see, the preliminary pathway is not a floor aware layer. So let's create the level ID field and populate the same level ID values for each floor. 
I copied the first floor level value from the units layer. I created a new field in preliminary pathways feature layer and gave the field name level underscore ID and the alias level ID. Make sure that it's a text data type and save. Go back to the preliminary pathway table and run the select by attributes tool. Create a clause to select vertical order value zero, which is the first floor. Once the proper records are selected, run the calculate field tool and paste the value copied from the unit's feature layer with a double apostrophe and click OK. Do the same for the rest of the vertical order values and populate the level ID field with matching floor level record value from the unit's layer. Once all values are populated, configure the preliminary path feature as a floor over layer from the properties tab. Now, let's view the preliminary path. You'll notice that the paths are generated across the floor, but not in the closet and mechanical rooms that were specified as a restricted area. Also, you can see that the columns, exterior walls, glasses, partial dividers, and interior walls specified from the details layer work as barriers to the path. Toggle between the floor levels and verify that the preliminary pathways are connected between the rooms and floor spaces as you intended. If you need to rerun the tool again, delete all the records inside the preliminary feature first and run the tool. This concludes the creation of preliminary pathways, a first step to creating the indoors network. Thank you for watching.